Welcome back to Bravo Breaking News. I am beyond excited to have my co-host Lisa back to break down all the drama that's going on on Real Housewives of Orange County. I am so happy to be back because we've got so much to cover. This Montana trip had feuds everywhere. We had Heather versus Taylor, Heather versus Shannon, Jen versus Gina. And meanwhile, they're just trying to survive it all on the rapids and fly fishing. And it was just, it was delightful. We are going to get into it all. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss anything. But before we dive into Orange County, there is something I wanted to get your thoughts on. And that is Crappy Lake, which premiered this week. I need to hear all of your thoughts. Okay, so this is like the perfect summer series. I've been looking forward to this for so long. It is literally the simple life meets Schitt's Creek meets Real Housewives of New York. And I'm obsessed with it, you guys. If you're not watching yet, you just do yourselves a favor. Get the Peacock. Pre oh, wait. No, it's on Bravo. Watch it. It is worth your time. Just having so Sonia and Luann back on our screens just like brings me joy. And there's, you know, I'm not a... Sonia is one of my favorite housewives of all time. Luann, I go cold and hot on, but like this version of Luann is phenomenal. What are you what are you thinking so far? I love it. I mean, Laverne and Shirley could never. They are really bringing it and they are the perfect complement to each other because I feel like Sonia like doesn't give two shits. She is, you know, running around farting on pool noodles and, you know, flirting <laughs> with everybody in sight and, you know, just says whatever comes to mind. Meanwhile, Luann takes herself a little bit more seriously, even though she is nothing like the Countess that we met in season one. But they just complement each other so well. I mean, them going around that town, you know, holding those auditions and kind of, you know, mingling with these, you know, regular folk is just so entertaining to watch. It's amazing. Like, honestly, just seeing them survive in this little motel room is so funny like and then seeing their different ways of living is hilarious so Luann brings her own bedding you know she's got like a nice comforter and pillow and everything her place is organized then we cut to Sonia's room and it is just chaos like she's got shit everywhere and I think this is day two that they were showing and the motel owner comes in to get her trash or something and She's got her vibrator laying on the bed, plugged into her charging station, aka her laptop. And it's just so funny. Like, she is such a kooky little bird, and I just adore her. But Luann, like, I think is kind of stealing my heart in this episode, in this series. She's literally diving into lake water, reaching her hands into a cave, and catching a catfish with her bare hands. I could never. I would never. And it's just like, like you said, she's come so far from this, you know, snobby countess. Oh, you should introduce me as Mrs. De La Seps to the driver. I mean, she definitely still has some of those vibes, but she's letting loose in a way that is just so fun to watch. And then I loved um, in episode two when they were just like flirting up a storm. Like these are the horniest women I have ever met in my life. They have been gone two days and oh my they God, need completely. sex. They need it now. You know, Luann is trying to, you know, get that firefighter. You know, do you like to party? Like she's trying to coerce him into, you know, hanging out with her. And then they go to this bar and Sonia like immediately zeroes in on this guy, the Richard or Richard tattoo on the back and she is like you know I'm just gonna play it coy play it cool you know like not be too desperate and then in the end she walks right into his pickup truck and I assume <laughs> goes home with him like epic like it talk about so game. wild they both definitely have game and it is just wild like you said these are the horniest women I've ever seen like I it's just it's beyond me but the guys, yeah, I mean, they obviously don't have like their usual pick of of men that, you know, inhabit Manhattan in this little town of Benton. So like 
you know, their standards, they might have to adjust a little bit, but they don't seem to have any problem with that. <laughs> no, and I mean, let's be real. Harry Dubin and Tom D'Agostino are not the best looking men. I think some of the men they're meeting no, you're right. might even be better. So I don't know, more power to them. I cannot wait to see like more of their shenanigans, like what they get into in this town. And at the end of the day, they're helping like bring tourism. And I just love it so much. It is like such a breath of fresh air after some of the very dark seasons mm -hmm. that we've had of these shows with, you know, arrests and cheating scandals and all of that. I think you're spot on. And I think that's what's making me enjoy it so much also is that it's really just fun. You know, it's not, they're not fighting with each other. They're not, you know, defrauding the elderly. <laughs> they're not, you know, being arrested. The FBI is not investigating them that we know of, but it's just about like them going and kind of having fun. And it's, it's just a nice change of pace. I totally agree. So speaking of changes of paces, let's switch gears to Real Housewives of Orange County because we have a lot to discuss. Um, this week's episode kind of picked up where we left off last week with Gina and Heather in the four-wheeler talking about Gina's like breakdown, about Jen's infidelity and all of this stuff. And Heather was you know, consoling her. Gina's like about to call Travis. Heather takes Gina's phone from her and is like, do not call him. You cannot talk to him about this. It was, I don't know. I personally did not like Heather in this moment. And she continues to kind of really rub me the wrong way throughout this episode. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, Heather did not have the best episode. And I think it was very apparent in the the scene, the dinner scene, the last day in Montana when she looked a little defeated. But I'm with you. I thought this was so weird that she sort of took Gina's phone out of her hand and said, do not call Travis. He is your boyfriend. He is not your therapist. I mean, I guess I, I think where she was coming from is, look, if you're always talking about your insecurities and you know, what your ex did to you and how that's upsetting, you know, it might rub your partner the wrong way. But I come from the camp of where Gina is coming from, where like her partner is her person, you know, and like she tells him everything. And when she's upset when she or when she's happy, that's who she wants to talk to because he understands her. And for Heather to kind of take that away and make her feel badly for it just seemed odd to me because to me that's kind of, that's the sign of a good relationship is when you can confide in your partner about you know your deepest darkest feelings and even when you're feeling low so i don't know i i was not into that advice either and i thought maybe it was a generational thing because shannon kind of jumped on that wagon too later on at dinner and they said you know oh well yeah you shouldn't be telling travis those things it's like, well, maybe that's how you you guys treat your marriages and your relationships. But like, I don't know. It's not that's not how it needs to be. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like, I am rarely on Team Gina. I am not a Gina fan by by any means. I really don't know what she's doing on this show. But in this moment, I am totally Team Gina. I mean, if you feel comfortable talking to your partner about something, you should do it. And to be honest, Heather's like, oh, he's not your therapist. Okay, well, Heather, stop acting like a therapist and telling her what to do because right now you're the one that's acting like a therapist and you have no right to do that. Yeah, totally true. So then we get to some lighter moments where they all put on their matching pajamas. They light up a joint, you know, provided by Fancy Pants herself, which um, kind of surprised me, but I also enjoyed. And, you know, we get Tamara pulling Jen aside and saying, you know, the line about, oh, when Ryan walked into my gym, the first time he pointed at me and said, I want to fuck her. And Tamara has been holding on to this. And Jen, I don't know. I know a lot of people are really liking Jen. I am still not quite convinced. And I think it's because I just don't get a lot of emotion from her. Like she feels very stoic and sort of deadpan all the time, especially in her reactions. And so she was like, oh, wow. And you're, you know, you're just telling me this now. Okay, that is upsetting. And I'm like, 
I can't really get a read on her. What was your take on this conversation? Yeah, I can't get a read on her either. I really don't know what to believe at this point. Um, You know, I do like to give first season housewives the benefit of the doubt because they're in front of cameras for the first time and they don't really know how to act or, you know, maybe, you know, deal with conflict and stuff like that. But we did see her show emotion when the next morning she's crying to Ryan on the phone about Tamara coming after her. You know, she came on the show mm-hmm. as Tamara's friend, right? And, you know, they have history with Cut Fitness. We learned that they had this like trio, basically the Trace Amigas that they were like BFFs with. But it's been, it's become quickly apparent that Tamara is kind of using her to like maybe create a storyline and create some drama it kind of seems like Tamara went into this with this in her head knowing she was going to drop this bombshell about Jen and Jen is like pretty upset Mm -hmm. and starting to realize this you know she's telling Ryan like you know I don't think I can trust Tamara's intentions at this point and I I agree with Jen I think Tamara kind of is throwing her under the bus and that was her plan all along I mean I feel like my biggest takeaway is if you have a friend who's a housewife and they get you on the show, beware because that friendship is going to fall apart immediately. Like it never turns out well. It's like think about Lisa Rinna bringing Denise Richards in. Think about Lisa and Garcelle. Think about uh, Lisa Rinna and ev- anybody. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I guess maybe just don't be friends with the Rinna. But it's just there's not a great track record of you of housewives bringing on a friend and like it lasting it's usually that friendship deteriorates and falls apart and I think Jen is you know I think she's onto something because as much as I think Tamara is good TV I think she is calculated in that way oh for sure 100% so they end up not sleeping in the tents which I completely identify with look if you have a a beautiful mansion a mile down the road I'm sorry, I'm not going to sleep in this little tent. Give me a bed. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I mean, I thought it would have been fun to see them roughing it, but it's no surprise that they chose the villa over the tents on the ground with those kind of like bitchy, like, you know, campsite managers, it seems like, who did not even want to be near them at all. <laughs> You're so right. They were they were definitely throwing some shade, but uh, it was kind of funny. So, and then they we see this great stoned montage of them just, you know, they have like reggae music playing and they're just having the time of their lives. They're laying on the kitchen island. They're, you know, loving on each other and everything laughing. And then Heather goes into to Shannon's room and Tamara's sleeping in there. And we kind of see a moment of, you know, Heather tells us later, like, she's feeling left out between this little, you know, refound friendship that they have. And but my biggest question was, Shannon mentioned that there was an animal in the room and that she heard something do some ASMR here on the ground. And I'm like, what animal was in there? Like, we never got to the bottom of that. How do you just go to sleep knowing that there's an animal in your room? I don't know. I would have really liked more of Stoned Shannon. I think it was last season. We got Heather and Shannon taking edibles or gummies. And it was probably Mm -hmm. like the best 15 minutes of television I've ever seen in my life. So I wish we got more of the Stoned montage. But We got my share of hilarity the next day when the ladies went off to their respective activities. So we had Taylor, Jen, and Tamara going whitewater rafting and Heather, Gina, and Shannon going fly fishing. Oh my God. First of all, which one would you pick? I would definitely do whitewater rafting. I mean, I am not an adventure seeker, but that just seems way more fun than fly fishing. What about you? way more fun oh yeah whitewater rafting all the way even with you know short shorts and balls hanging out it was so funny because to me like taylor surprised me in this scene because she was the tough one and even in the the night before she was the one eating the bison and like oh guys it's actually pretty good taylor is a little bit more adventurous than you expect and tamra who's like the athletic one the fitness you know guru she's so scared she can't even paddle to me, Tamara was totally giving Vicky in this scene, like 100%. She was like, I'm going to embody Vicky Gunvalson and just sit here and be like, ah, ah. and it was so funny. But I, oh. the yeah, the tour guide, everything. How do you not know as a man? How do you not know 
when your junk is starting to come out of your shorts. I, I just, I don't get it, but he seemed to have no clue. I don't know. It seems like maybe he had more important shit to worry about, seeing as these ladies, <laughs> after yelling, paddle, you have to paddle, paddle together. He was the only one steering that fucking raft. Like, and I was dying, like literally tears were streaming down my face, seeing these women holding the paddles up and screaming, paddle you have to paddle oh my god and then who was it said that i think i just shit myself like i think it was Tamara. oh my gosh so hilarious that was so hilarious and then meanwhile we get this juxtaposition with the fly fishing with the three of them oh my god and you think that's going to be a tame activity you know boring and they start getting in and they're like oh this is there's a strong current here and i thought that they were being like, I thought they were exaggerating, but once you start seeing them all fall down, at one point, Heather stops and everyone was like, are you good? You got it? And I was like, what is she doing? What is happening right now? It looked like she was peeing or something. I didn't know what was happening. And then I realized, oh, she's trying to get her footing because the current is so strong. And then eventually it takes her out. And so it's like she goes down and then seeing Shannon fall like will never get old to me. Like Shannon's physical comedy is just it's it's spot on. And then Gina ends up falling and it's just, you know, you've got the whitewater rapids on one scene and then you've got the the fly fishing rapids on the other. And it was great. I know. It's just so funny how literally they are white water rafting in the most intense rapids and then cut to Shannon. Oh my God, rapids. There's quite a current here. Like, oh my God. It's so funny. The editors did it right with that one because it was just too funny. I agree. The physical comedy there is unmatched. I mean, and then they're like, there's a lobster. Ah, Like, what was with the lobster? There's no lobsters in lakes, are there? We didn't get an answer. We did not get an answer. It was unclear whether it was really a lobster, but they were freaking out and it was just chef's kiss, like hilarious. I need to know, and I don't want to spend time Googling it. So if you guys know, are there are there lakes that have lobsters? Please, please share in the comments. So then the ladies come back to home base and they go to dinner. You know, they're all sitting down at the table and we can already tell that there is going to be drama. But it was kind of weird because we started off with Tamara saying that the sound of water being poured out of a pitcher triggers her. Now, this is something that I personally have never heard of, would never even think to be triggered by. Am I alone? <laughs> No, you're definitely not alone. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite sounds because I love drinking water. But I think Tamara was just thirsty for attention maybe um, yeah. and felt like she needed to say something. And I feel like someone else has said this in the in the Bravo content creators universe, and I can't remember who, but they're so right because we are way overusing this word trigger. Like not everything can be a trigger, okay? It's just... Maybe you just don't like that sound, but it doesn't mean it's a trigger. Okay. So let's just, you know, calm down a little bit. Use that term lightly. So of course, as we get with most housewives trip, they do the peach in the pit or the high and the low or whatever you want to call it of the trip. And we get Heather really coming on strong because like you said before, she reveals that she now feels left out from Shannon and Tamara because they were all in the villa together. And this was kind of like her final straw. Like it was like she felt left out all weekend. There were like little things that really like, you know, triggered her or pushed her buttons. <laughs> and she decided to bring that up as her low over the explosive fight that she had with Taylor <laughs> about IMDb. Like what? Yeah, I think it goes to show how much stock she's putting in her relationship with Taylor because she clearly just didn't even remember it. And it was only two nights prior. But I think we're really seeing Heather's insecurity come through here. And it's it's fascinating because, you know, she's such a perfectionist. She's such a control freak. And she really is afraid that she's going to be the odd man out 
of this group now that Shannon and Tamara have made up. And I just think it's weird. You wouldn't expect that from someone, let alone, you know, a, a woman in her 40s, let alone an accomplished woman like Heather. And so, I mean, I guess I respect her for kind of sharing her vulnerability. I don't think she meant it to sort of blow up in her face the way it did. But I don't know. It was odd. Yeah, no, she's definitely insecure. I mean, if you think about it, she returned last season and was like queen of OC. You know, everybody was so excited for her Uh return. She was the pinnacle of the franchise. But now Tamara's back and Heather has stooped to a lower, you know, level on the ladder in the franchise. So I think she is intimidated. I think she doesn't want to lose that status of being like that golden, you know, housewife of the franchise. I think that she is scared about her place in the world as a housewife in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I also do think, though, that Shannon kind of seized on the moment and saw an opportunity to sort of make it bigger than it was and dramatize it a bit. But... Then we get Heather also pissing off Gina again because Jen says that her, you know, her low was making Gina feel bad about, you know, the infidelity situation and she doesn't want Gina to feel uncomfortable around her. And so Gina starts talking about it and then, you know, Shannon chimes in and says, oh, you shouldn't be talking to Travis about that. And Heather says, yeah, how long is Travis going to put up with this for? And that pissed off Gina, which it would piss me off too. It's none of your fucking business. And, you know, don't say it like my boyfriend's putting up with me. You know, they're in a relationship together. They're choosing to be together. So, you know, it's like that includes the whole person as a whole and not just the good parts. And what pisses me off so much about this is we see them come back from the trip. And of course, They're all filming individually with their spouses talking about the drama that went down on the trip. That's all Gina was trying to do Mm -hmm. was call Travis during the trip like every housewife does. We always get the signature FaceTime scene with the spouse on the trip telling them what's going down and sharing their point of view. That's what Gina was going to do before Heather stopped her. But they all go back home and they all, you know, dish to their spouses about what happened. And we see this scene with Tamara and Eddie, and they are talking about how, you know, the whole cut fitness comment, she tells him how, you know, the whole thing about, oh, I walked into the gym and said, I want to fuck her, all that shit. Eddie comes back and says that Ryan has a reputation of going after married women and that, Mm -hmm. you know, Ryan is giving her like Brooks vibes in Vicky in that everybody is really telling her this is this guy's a red flag this guy is mm-hmm. bad news there are you know whispers going around and she is not hearing it but i think at a certain point if if she's not hearing it it's because she doesn't want to hear it you know it's like she you can only do so much you can't force someone to break up with who they're with you know it and at a certain point you just have to accept it and be like all right well you know you're making your decision and I hope it works out. It's probably not going to. But I I do kind of get sick of this. Like, I think we see in a a teaser for next week, you know, you need to break up with your boyfriend. It's like, that's not how it works. But yeah, Eddie kind of says that he was even warned, you know, keep an eye on your wife around this guy. So yeah, I mean, it's probably not going to turn out great. And Jen probably is being a dum-dum. He doesn't give off like super trustworthy vibes at all. Like there's just something about his face, something about just him in general sleem- seems a bit a bit slimy. And the whole dick pic situation, yeah, I sent it to my whole address book like an idiot. I don't know how that happens. And why do you only have four people in your address book? Like there's a lot of questions there. It just sounds like it's a, you know, an excuse. And he probably has excuse after excuse after excuse for anything weird like that that comes up and Jen's just buying it. Exactly. Um, But we do get this scene with Gina and Travis, which really just like warmed my heart. And I feel like I don't really have a connection with Travis at all in the last couple of years. I just, I mean, he's been around, but like we haven't really gotten much from him. 
But this cu- last couple minutes of the episode, I was like, oh my God, it really, it really touched me because you see that he really does care about Gina. And, you know, she's saying that she's upset with Heather and, you know, she thought that they were good friends. Heather accused her of not being a good friend. But then during the trip, Heather was not being a good friend and Gina felt like she wasn't checking in on her enough and she was kind of saying, also don't rely on Travis. And Travis was basically like, look, you can tell me anything. You know, I want you to come with me, come to me when you're feeling upset. Like that's part of my job as being your partner and like I'm happy to do it. And he's like, I've got big shoulders, like I can carry it and you can cry on me. And I just thought it was so sweet and, you know, a really good example of of a good relationship. Yeah, I agree. I mean, going from Jen and Ryan to Gina and Travis, it kind of seems like night and day. I mean, Ryan is totally giving off bad vibes. And I don't know if anybody saw my post on threads, but I cannot look at Ryan without seeing Paul Nassif. I mean, it is like his twin if he lost 30 pounds. Like, look at the photos, <laughs> look at the scene, rewatch the scenes from last night because they are twins. They could be brothers. But yeah, he's totally giving off bad vibes. I mean, Travis is really, you know, I can see why Gina fell for him. He kind of seems like completely different than her ex. I cannot see him ever, you know, being filed with domestic charges or anything like that. He seems really Mm -hmm. sweet. And like I said before, I'm team Gina on this one. I think that she she should be able to talk to Travis about whatever she wants without fancy pants, keeping her from doing that and getting in the middle. Absolutely. Amen to that. So that is our recap of Crappy Lake and OC this week. We will be back next week to cover Crappy Lake and OC. I am so excited. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any recaps or Bravo breaking news to come. Can't wait till next time. Bye, everyone.